Welcome back, Camille. Oh my gosh, it's been a minute. Things over here have been really crazy. I'll catch you guys up later because I'm about to head out. But yeah, I've had a horrible month. I'll tell you all about it. The one good thing that has happened recently though is that my little sister has moved to Austin. Originally, it was actually supposed to happen in January and then it got pushed back to February and now it's March and she's finally here. I feel bad because with all the craziness that has been going on, I wasn't really able to like help her move in and you know, apply for jobs and stuff. I've just been like so not okay. <laughs> and you know, she pretty much just turned 18. She's really young, like it's a lot to figure out on your own. So yeah, I feel really bad that I haven't been able to like be as supportive as I want to be through all this. But things in my life have finally somewhat started to just be chill and like go back to normal. So I am gonna go visit her at work. She has no idea that I'm coming, so I'm gonna surprise her. I've never been to where she works either, so that should be fun. She did just say that it's really slow over there. So hopefully she has time to like kind of hang out and chat. I'm so excited. I have not left my house in literally like a week and a half. I'm not even exaggerating. Like it's been so long. So let's go surprise London. I've made it and London was so surprised and I'm getting princess treatment. It's so empty and she has no one to attend to other than me. So right now she's putting salt on the rim of my drink and bringing me everything I could ask for. I love it here. And there's like an outdoor vibe. There's like a volleyball game going on next to me. Super fun. Also, I stole London's jacket. I made it back home and oh my God. I didn't realize how much I needed that. I've been so cooped up in here. I look so pale right now. I really need to get outside more. And also just some like adult conversation. I've just been hanging out with Coco and Didi and as much as I love them, they aren't the best at holding a conversation <laughs> sometimes. They're all over the place. But yeah, as I've said, it's been really hard to do that. It's been hard to get outside. This month has been awful. At the beginning of this month, we all got strep. Coco got it, and then I got it, and Didi got it. And then one by one, we all started to recover. And for a split second, like I thought we were in the clear. And then we all got reinfected. We all got strep again, twice in a row. And so yeah, that just dragged on for like two weeks, it was insane. But eventually we finally got past that, no more strep. And then Coco started to cough a bunch. In October, if you remember, she was hospitalized for a very nasty cough. She had RSV and since she was a preemie, she has really weak lungs. So anytime there's like a respiratory infection, her lungs just cannot handle it at all. Like me and Dee Dee will get the same thing and you know, it's annoying and we're coughing, but like we're fine. Coco at times like hasn't been able to get enough oxygen because of her weak lungs. So after her cough started sounding scary again and I felt like she wasn't really breathing great, I took her in to the emergency room. Thankfully, I went in early enough this time that she didn't have to be admitted to the hospital because this is like the third time she's gone into the emergency room with like respiratory issues. And the previous two times that we went in for that, she was hospitalized for like a week, first with pneumonia and then with RSV. And so I fully expected to go in and stay in the hospital for a solid week or so because that's how it's gone in the past and so yeah i was really anxious going into the hospital in the first place that's something that's a huge trigger for my ptsd like that's the last place i ever saw landon was in a hospital and i just have a lot of really really traumatizing memories at the hospital. And so it's really, really hard for me to specifically be in the emergency room. And it doesn't help that all hospitals kind of look the same, they're set up the same, they smell the same, like it's such a hospital. So yeah, that's been a reoccurring thing for the past like four years. I just 
have a really, really hard time walking into the hospital. Once I'm there, it's usually not so bad. Like being in the hospital and in the hospital room, I can definitely manage it. It's just that initial like walking in there that's really hard for me. Multiple times I've like thrown up outside of the emergency room, just like trying to bring myself to walk in the doors and like check in. But as a parent who needs to like take my daughter to seek medical attention, like I have to, I have no choice but to walk in the hospital and do what needs to be done. And so there's a lot of shame there. This is my job as a parent, I have to do this. It's what's best for my daughter right now is that we go and like no one else is gonna step in and do this but me, like I'm, I'm her parent, but Everything in my body right now is telling me to not walk into this building. And of course, I was worried about Coco and wanted to make sure she's okay. But the anxiety doesn't even necessarily stem from that. My brain understands that I'm there for Coco, but it feels like I'm there for Landon. And it feels like I'm about to walk in and see him there like the first time that I saw him there in that emergency room right after it happened. And I think that memory sticks out so vividly because that's really when it like set in that it was real. When I like saw him in the emergency room in the state that he was in and I had to like talk to the doctor and talk to the detective and like that initial like first few hours was just really really hard and you know that's the nature of PTSD like it it feels like I'm there it feels like I've traveled back in time it feels like that's what I'm stepping into even though I know it's not but it feels like that and all the feelings from that memory just like come flooding in so yeah I, I had a really really hard time taking Coco to the emergency room and again there's just so much shame with that like most parents are able to do that. Most parents can take their child to the emergency room and like, it's not fun for anyone ever, but it's not something that has them like hyperventilating and like nauseous. Thankfully, my sister was able to get off work and come and help me. So I was walking in there with her and that made it so much better. And then once we got checked in and like into a room, my nerves had kind of like settled down and Coco was breathing just fine. Her oxygen levels were great. She wasn't struggling to get oxygen at all, which again, like in the past, she had really dangerously low oxygen levels. So that was a huge relief and she was able to just do a few breathing treatments and then they sent her on her way and she got a steroid and some breathing treatments to be sent home with. So. We got her like her own breathing machine, which I feel like she's needed for a while now because this is such a reoccurring thing, but we finally have what we need to like take care of it at home before it gets too bad. And we have an appointment for her to see an asthma specialist. They also ran a swab on her and she came back positive for the flu, which is like, oh, amazing. The flu and then of course Dee Dee got the flu and then I got the flu so for the past like three four weeks we have just been sick non-stop literally non-stop at least one of us has been sick and of course as the parent like when Coco's sick I've got to take care of her when Dee Dee's sick I've got to take care of her when I'm sick I've got to take care of myself and everybody else. So yeah, it's been really rough. Thankfully, by the time I got sick, the girls were all better so they could go to school and I could rest a bit. But I would honestly rather us all be sick at once because my kids like had just got done being sick and they were on full energy. It feels like they had all the energy in the world. Usually like I could take them to the park on the weekend and let them run out their energy. And you know, I have like something in me to give back to them and to like keep up with them. I did not, I was, they were having to like take care of me and it hit me pretty bad. Like I, 
I was really, really sick. Like the strep throat wasn't that bad, but with the flu, oh my God, I just couldn't even move. It was awful. And yeah, I was just crying. I was crying very hard. <laughs> just like, it's not fair that I have to do this alone right now. Like this is the worst. I want my mom. I want someone to take care of me. I need help like so bad. Really, really, really was not doing well. And all the stress of the three weeks prior had just kind of culminated to that one moment. I feel a lot better today though. It was nice to relax and just hang out with my sister. I love my sister so much. But yes, speaking of mental health, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. I've had to cancel my last several therapy sessions because everyone was sick and I can't go into therapy when I'm taking care of sick people. But boy, do I have so much to unleash on my therapist at that next session. Cannot come soon enough. Missing therapy for a few weeks just makes me realize like how badly I need it and how helpful it is for me. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. It lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging. Whatever's the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise that may not be available in your city. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like. And then BetterHelp can match you with a therapist to help. You can schedule a therapy session for a time that's most convenient for you. And if you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch, no questions asked, just go to your settings and it's a click of a button at no additional cost. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a happier, healthier life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash camandfam. Clicking that link helps support this channel and gets you 10% off of your first month with BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thanks again, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna go pick up the girls and then we are headed to the park. Like I said, we've all been pretty cooped up this last month. I felt really bad this past weekend that I didn't have much to give to them. Just energy-wise, I could not match their level. And I think all three of us can really use some sunlight. Not to mention, it is such a beautiful day out today. Let's go. Do you have a snack? What snack is it? It's a snack pot. <laughs> this is a snack pot. No, it's a nectarine. <laughs> Say it. It's a snack pot. Nectarine. Nectarine. Can I have a bite? Okay. Okay. Not a big one. A huge one? A no. A ginormous one? A no. A megabyte? No. <laughs> yeah. Was <laughs> oh. <laughs> that too big? Uh, I see the seed. Yeah. Sorry. I got the pink seed. I got a little ahead of myself. Ooh, I'm gonna do a megabyte. Megabyte? Okay, do a megabyte. Is that a megabyte? Oh, that was mega. So, London, how do you feel? Apple. <laughs> it's not an apple. It's not an apple. What it's is not? it? What is it? We just had this conversation. What is it? You. We have to say it together. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Nectarine. <laughs> How was your first few weeks in the city? I feel like the first week I didn't leave my house and then the second week I was just like working. But the times that I have gone to the actual city since I've been here, have been pretty gnarly and great. A lot of shows, I've been finding random little park meetups 
on a weekly schedule. So every Sunday, all the people in the drum circle get around. And on Wednesday, they have a DJ playing at the park, playing some EDM songs. And they had these guys, I'm trying to get different guys just like practicing different like circus acts, like two balls with ropes and they would like swing them around and be all cool. And then eventually at nighttime, they lit them on fire and they had the, they were like bending fire. They were like fire benders. And I was like, no way. What did I just stumble upon? So anyways, I've, I've been here for so long and I had no idea about that. And you it's, it's it. literally in Zilker. Every Wednesday night, they uh, set up a little like party. stand party. And we just, um, um, um. Take your feet out. <laughs> <laughs> You look like you play sports, Kim. Yeah. Good game today. No. The Bye. weather. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I made it back home. Um, but I saw a picture of myself today that I didn't like. And I think it's because I um, I need a haircut. And so now I'm cutting bangs, and I put this clip in so I could step away and grab my camera without losing where I was at. I've already started cutting. There's hair everywhere. I really need a haircut so bad. I think I'm gonna... I can't even find the right scissors. I'm using these. Oh god, what am I doing? Alright, where was I? I'm also gonna dye my hair soon. And so I want like a total transformation, of course. Cause the more hair that I cut off, the less I have to dye. Okay, that feels uneven. So, this side is definitely longer. My part's not even straight, is the thing. <laughs> I See, I want like, I want bangs, but it's like, can you just cut bangs? I know how to cut bangs. I do it all the time on Coco. Guys, is this a mistake? I feel like I know the answer to that. That was a lot. Oh, oh, that was a lot. I was even though. I feel like I'm getting better. I kind of love it. Okay, I feel like we got these face framing pieces. Like, that was good, a good call. And here's the thing, is that I've always wanted like bangs, like bangs bangs, like actual bangs. Kind of like Coco's, but maybe not, like maybe a little more wispy, because she has like full front bangs. But I have a middle part and I can't really train my hair to do that. And so I always like keep it at this level, right? Right? I keep it right about there. Cause it's like, okay, like to, to cut it to here is a choice. So it needs, it needs to be in the front. Oh. Oh my god. My other camera died. And I found my big scissors. I don't know if you could tell, but I cut my, I cut my hair. I cut it. Um, I love it so much. It's not done. It's not. It's uh, about halfway there. We're getting somewhere. I'm really scared about the back, but whatever. It's what the sink is looking like. Oh, it just, it feels so healthy. The part that I cut out was like dyed hair, like I had bleached it. As you can see, ew. But like that's literally bleached. There's a few little bleached bits left. But the problem I've been having is I have this like top layer from me growing out my mullet is just shorter. And it like curves in. It just sits weird, and I feel like if it was all that length, then it would all sit weird, and then it'd be fine, right? I love it, and people say I my hair is too thick to have like a blunt, short haircut, but I disagree. We'll see what I think when I'm done, though. I'm getting ahead of myself, but yes, like since this is the length that I want it to all be, yeah, that chunk, I'm just bringing pieces forward and then matching it up to that. 
The hard part will be making this look even, is the thing. Perfect, amazing. Oh, this, this piece that I cut earlier actually might be a problem. <laughs> what? What's wrong with my, <laughs> they're not even closing all the way. Birdie, please, you're making this so hard. She's like, keeps climbing on here and getting in my way. All about the same length. Next section. I don't want to add too much at once. I also am trying not to like pull too hard on it. Birdie, you're literally gonna get covered in my hair. Perfect. Like this is kind of a little too easy. And the back is like just literally not my problem. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh my god. One step at a time. <laughs> this is actually so fun. I would never have done this like in the past. Like I would never cut my own hair. But now that I've like cut it a few times and I just also just don't really care anymore. <laughs> I'm like, not to be quirky, but I'm being a little quirky right now. The thing is, I have been up. It is midnight. It's probably one, actually. Where's my phone? It's, it was right next to me. It's one. I've literally been up for hours looking on Pinterest at haircuts. Literally almost convinced that I want to like go short, short again. Y'all remember that. We all remember. And I don't know, I just like have been stressing myself out over my hair, looking at old pictures, being like, was it that bad? What could I do differently to like make short hair look better on me this time? If I do want to go like really short. Ultimately, I just had to do something because I'm so frustrated with my hair right now. It's still this one piece that is going to continue to bother me. I could go a little shorter and make it all that length, I could, I could just commit that much further because it is this one little piece that's like, huh, huh? A little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. What do we think? No, that's ridiculous, no. This is good for now. And you know what? I'll probably have to cut it that much shorter whenever my hairstylist fixes the damage I'm doing to my hair currently. Because there's no way this is like even. Like, the sound of that is grating. That, is, that just, like, is not how it's supposed to sound, either. Is there any hair in the back? <laughs> oh, well. Okay. <laughs> Wait, is it done? Okay. Genuinely, tell me what the back looks like, guys. Please be honest. Do not lie. <sighs> Let's check. So it's not even. It's definitely longer on that side. That's the side I was like nervous about. The way there's like actually a huge knot in the back of my hair. I don't feel like that's conducive to uh, getting an even haircut. <laughs> oh my God. Should I have done this like wet? I just feel like I look like that one American Girl doll, Krista, Chrissy. Krista. I need to look her up. I had that doll. Carissa. Carissa. <gasps> yeah. And that's exactly what it's giving. Me and Carissa. Twins. Guys, I cut like several inches off. That's a lot of length. And I knew it was achievable. I had faith in myself when no one else did. Oh, it's so blunt. <laughs> There's like actually zero texture, zero feathering, and that can come at a later date. I actually did a very similar cut the first time I cut my own hair, which was like two, three years ago-ish. And it was the same vibe and I did get it touched up. I think I've, I did a much better job this time actually though at getting it even, especially in the back. And that's the thing, I cut it a little bit longer than I'd like even like be okay with. Like, if in the touch-ups, it needs to just get a little bit shorter just to kind of make up for the choppiness of it. That's fine. That's totally fine with me. And it will only grow. It will only grow. And you know what the best part is? My hair is all one length now. And I have been 
trying so hard for the last year to get it to be the same length. Which means that since cutting my hair to like here, I have grown it out. Like this piece, this chunk, was literally up here at one point. It was this short, so I've grown my hair all the way to this length, and then some, but I cut that part off. I love it, I'm happy, I'm happy with it. That's the final result. That is all for today. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thank you for the emotional support as I went through this journey. I'm still freaking out. And I'll see you guys in the next video, Kamalee. Bye.